Hey everyone, Eggman here with another video. We had not one, but two big regionals this last weekend. Uh, we had PPG Atlanta as well as ARG uh, Las Vegas. So really cool, and it's really interesting to compare and contrast the two events. Uh, there, there's, um, because, you know, people can only be at one event there, uh, a lot of people had to choose which one they were going to, so I'd say, like, a lot of the higher playing, or higher placing people are split between the two events, uh, especially, uh, it's kind of East Coast versus West Coast in that kind of sense, too, so, because the Midwest gets no love, but, uh, yeah, it's really cool, so we're gonna go over that, uh, also, this is on, uh, DBS decks, they updated the events, uh, quicker than I could make an Excel spreadsheet for it, so, uh, shoutouts to those guys. They also have uh, just like some really interesting card dominance and a really nice pie chart. So that's really cool. So I'm uh, doing that uh, real quick. Um, let's go through. Uh, I'm probably going to do um, PPG Atlanta next and ARG Las Vegas right afterwards. So if you want to skip right to ARG Las Las Vegas for whatever reason, uh, here's a timestamp for that because I guess if, if you don't care about Atlanta, but there's that. And then uh, I, I do want to just do a quick breakdown on leaders real quick before we get into it. So uh, for uh, PPG Atlanta, I'd say it's a little bit more, it was a little bit more safe in the sense that there are only, uh, what, five leaders in the top 16, which is which is fairly uh, good. But it's really interesting that ha uh, six were, six were Broly. Uh, six were Vegeta Baby, which is just like exploded at this event. Uh, two Hurrigan, uh, Janimba, and uh, Frieza the Galactic Emperor. And also, like, Janimba, spoilers because I'm going to talk about it. Uh, Janimba won. Like, it was, it still won, even though it was the 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 rogue deck, uh, or not rogue deck, but like the one of in the top 16. It was able to, to overcome everything and, and beat everything else. So that was really cool. And then, uh, contrasting with the, um, with the ARG Las Vegas event. Uh, we've got a lot, my, lot more diversity. This this one looks more like the the Wild West, which is more, even more fitting of an analogy when you realize this was in the, the Western United States. But uh, we had four Hudergarn, uh four Broly. Uh, we had we didn't have any baby or Vegeta baby in in this uh, top sixteen, which I thought was really interesting. Uh, contrasting, um, this didn't have like Dragon Ball leader. It didn't have Pan leader, uh, anything like that. So that was, that was really. Uh, weird to compare and contrast the other two, uh, but there's also they had three Pan, they had two Dragon Ball, and also one Janimba, one Vegeta. The the draft box Vegeta, one of my favorite leaders. So props to that guy for getting there, and then also Yamcha, the Hungry Wolf. So uh, very cool there. Uh, and let's let's go into uh, the analysis. So here is uh, Dehan's uh, first place deck. It's it's no Janimba. I'm not really going to talk about this deck too much because I, I feel like it's it's pretty thought out by now. Um, and in general, for more of these like established deck lists, I probably won't go into them too much because uh, I don't know what what more to say. Um, and you know, everyone everyone pretty much has their opinions on on these decks, all right. But uh, some minor interesting thing is uh, two Shenron uh, figure of Majesty. Not everyone runs this. I thought that was interesting in there, and then also like uh, he's not main boarding Mafuba, right? Yeah, no main board Mafuba, which is interesting, and then also um, he's got like these Awakening Talent Pan and Furthering Destruction Chomp in the side, which I think are really good. Uh, he was able to go aggro game three against Justin and kind of made um, made him play on the back foot, and because of that, he I think he played a little bit too cautious and. Uh, Deha was able to uh, to take the win from him. So uh, yeah, really, really good play for him. And once again, just a solid deck, solid, solid archetype. So uh, next up, we've got uh, Justin Rios, who got second. Um, and with just just a generic, not, so it's 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 not generic, but uh, he has the swap engine. But which is really interesting about this deck is that you can side into the the height of mastery engine. So. Um, and that's something uh, decks that can do that are really interesting to me. Like I really like the idea of like playing game one with with one strategy, and then your opponent kind of sides to. Oh man, he's kind of more aggressive. I'll play a lot of like early defense game two, and then game two comes out, and you've got um, this entire different win condition, right? So I think that's really cool. Um, not having bad ring in the main is probably probably a little bit of a. Mm, I, I think you should probably run it in the main, but. He did very well without that. Uh, I, I almost guarantee he sided it probably every game too, but a really solid deck. And uh, running like four Mira and three East Kai in the, in the main, really aggressive with that too. So uh, yeah, cool. Let's go to the next one. Next we got Alex Wilking. Uh, <laughs> 
I messaged him, or he messaged me about uh, doing a a deck, uh, like kind of a talk about the event. And we might still do it, but he just said, like, man, I just I just cheesed it with like the most generic list. And I'm like, yeah, let me see the list. And like, oh man, he kind of cheesed it with a generic list. But uh, yeah, still, it's even though it's generic, uh, it's still really good. Just path path to greatness and the height of mastery is awesome. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of people put in these this partial dynasties and Goten, which is good because. Uh, you can find it with Successor of Hope, of course, but also uh, a lot of people are running um, the Super Saiyan Bardock, the Overrun card for one, that uh, can attack things in active mode, and so being able to have like a free 15k combo for your Path of Greatness uh, is a really good defense target. That's, that's like a super combo and a half for defending your, your active card, so that's really cool. Um, and I think that that's about it for for that. So I, I'm, I've been seeing a lot of people put in Trunks Power Overseeing Time, and you'll probably see a lot more in these deck lists, but I think it's a really good choice right now, especially against the mill matchup, because uh, halfway through the game, you pretty much can search half your deck for any card you want. So that's really cool. Uh, so any deck that's not relying on sparking or sparking combos, I think Trunks Power Overseeing Time is, is going to be seen uh, more and more often. So... Uh, next up, we've got Marcel Russell's um, Broly. So he had um, he had an interesting. He had kind of like the the half and half list. He, I, he's half Broly swap, and he's half uh, lin- uh, like uh, just Goku's lineage swap. So um, I don't know. I don't know. Do you hide a mastery? Is that is that the the deck archetype? Whatever. Victory strike. So. Um, Halfway through the game, he can pretty dis- much decide: um, Do I want to win just by being aggressive and like dropping a mirror out of nowhere, or do I want to just use height of mastery and win from that? So, uh, really interesting. Um, I'd say I-, I I fear that you're kind of split uh, too too much down the middle, and so you end up doing middle of the road for for both decks, but not really you know great in one. So I think that can probably get you sometimes but really well uh he's he plays top 16 so he did really well uh after the top two i don't know it's it's not really clear who who won i'm guessing by the time this video comes out or uh and stuff like that places will be updated and stuff but i don't know that right now but uh he's also running one shoe guess because he's not afraid even though like literally everyone <laughs> uh actually i think two people of the top both top 16s so 30 people of the top 32 um did not uh, run Cronoa, so just that's everywhere. So uh, I, I w- I'd be interested to know how many times he was able to successfully get Shugesh off. But uh, other than that, pretty pretty normal. Uh, he has a preface of recovery Son Goku in the side. I don't know why. I mean, it's it. I don't know. It's, it's that seems like a really interesting one of. But uh, yeah, other than that, uh, a really cool deck profile. Uh, next up, we've got Eddie Saint Hilaire's uh, Broly Swap. Right. Yep. He just has the the more aggressive version of it, um, but he also has the che- uh, not cheese, but like the interesting uh, dimension support trunks. So what this card does is it's overround for three, and also there there are a lot of dimension support trunks decks this this uh, this weekend. So it's really interesting that a lot of people came out with that. But uh, the idea is that um, you play this for for one with overround three, you're able to get out Super Saiyan Blue Son Goku, and then it gets crit, and I think it gives a does it give it 5k? I don't remember. Um, but it, it gives it crit for sure. And then you just have this big crit thing for one energy. You get you get the advantage of getting two bodies out for one energy. And then also you can re-stand it for another crit. So really cool there. Um, and that just kind of the being able to bog them down with a lot of big attackers and also hitting with crit. Also running four energy. Or this is the Bardock I was talking about earlier. Uh, burst energy Super, Super Saiyan Bardock. So this is really good also for attacking either... Uh, into um, just like some blockers that you're afraid of are like the striving to be the best on Goku the two drop blue I didn't actually see a lot of that card this weekend which is really interesting so I'm not sure if people weren't playing it or if the people who were got beat but um, uh, yeah this this is definitely a really good counter to that because it's when you attack with it you're already a 30k and so they have to combo like 25k at least to get rid of him so uh, to, to let it live if you if you don't negate it so that's really powerful uh, other than that, uh, that's nothing too fancy to Dimensional Banisher food because he's not afraid of using Overrome, which I think is fun. And then, uh, yeah, so let's go to uh, Juan Brand with another Broly deck. So this, I think this is the last, okay, we've got, what, two more Broly decks. Uh, and I, after, after the top two, I just, I uh, differentiated it by leader. But uh, this is a pretty similar idea of just uh, the, the more aggressive swap deck profile. 
Uh, also not running Shugash, which is, um, I think, the best, especially for the the swap engine, like the early aggressive one. I don't think uh, he's needed. Shugash doesn't really... You don't really even have like a three drop you really want to get out, so I think that's okay. Um, but yep, four, four, Mir four Mira Crater Absorbed and three Hidden Power East Kai. Really powerful, just getting a lot of damage in. Uh, he also did the the same side, and I'm not sure if he has the same deck list as Justin Rios. Let me see. Yep, okay, I already talked about this. <laughs> so this one also didn't get first. <laughs> so uh, let's go. Let's go to uh, Daniel Brown then. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. I love this. Okay. This is this is the spice. If I if I have like a spice meter, this would be three spice out of two. But um, we've got uh, it. It was uh, advertised as World Martial Arts Lineage Swap Broly. So that it's really cool. So he's got like a bunch of these World Martial Arts things um, coming out. So uh, you've got Master Roshi and Master Shen. Uh, they both have. Uh, barrier and then both their effects are if you can put the other one to rest and draw a card so if you have both these out you draw two cards if you put them to rest mode um and so that's really cool and then also there's toughen up chaozu so chaozu has blocker and then if krillin's out um or when uh yeah when krillin's out you can pump him up to 15k uh and then uh, krillin just says if if chaozu's out he gains plus 5k in critical so a 20k crit is really powerful so that's really cool. And so he's got like this early game where he just makes gets a lot of value from stuff like that. Um, he's running two Shugesh and two Jockos. So um, this is just to be able to get uh, this out for free and probably do the combo earlier. Um, but also has uh, what ultimate potential Super Saiyan 2 Son Gohan 2 and, and Explosive Spirit. So one of each are nice. Uh, he also has, he had three announcers play by play pro. And you can't use it for a negate, but he does it literally just to draw cards. So if you have Master Roshi and Master Shin out, you draw two cards and you play this, and then you draw another two cards. So just getting four cards, and then also Broly attacks, so you get another plus two. So you get six. Uh, you know, you pretty much get to double your hand on turn two if you have all these cards. So a really interesting there, um, and it's really good because uh, it, it gets you, lets you dig really deep for uh, Victory Strike, which is cool. Um, and then also, uh, I think I think that's about it. It's, it's really funny to see like a single Bardock in there, but uh, I think that's cool. And uh, and then going into the side, he's got another announcer. He's got um, he's also got like Vegeta striving to be the best, which I think is a really good card for for this deck um, in in general. But really really cool and interesting build. Uh, props to him. I I really do like this build. So and I'm happy he did so well with it. So and also oh uh, one more thing. So if if they're trying to attack into your Master Roshi or Master Shen, um, you can just like drop this Sun Goten, and then it's a 21k, and so they have to combo to 25k to to get rid of one of these. So that's that's I think that's really cool. And since you're already getting so much card advantage, like them having to combo more to get out of that is just more advantage for you as well. So uh, really really cool deck. Uh, let's let's go to uh, the Vegeta lists, uh, baby Vegetas. Uh, so this is Peter Katani's um, um, list. Um, he's got uh, so a lot of these have pretty much the same engine of uh, the one drop babies, the the four drops, the five drops, and the six. Is that right? Having three of this guy? I thought he had four and two. Peter Katani didn't put in the ratios for his extra cards, so uh, it's a little bit up in the air at this exact moment. But. Um, Okay, well, I'll, I feel like you should have four of these guys, but it, regardless, um, uh, you have to you play these, and then you can go into baby strength, and then there's, then there's a new promo, and then the new promo can go into the the six drop ape. So that's that's usually about half of people's decks, uh, because then they also run chain attack and intensifying power, um, and then after that, it's it's it really is like um, it's it's probably like over half the decks built for you uh, for this engine, but it's a really strong engine for sure, especially with revenge death ball. Uh, this is one of the best defensive combos in the game, especially since it can blow something up on attack if it doesn't have barrier. So that's really cool. Um, and uh, being able to play Foreseeing Hit is always, always good, especially in this format. So uh, red's really nice there. Two body change Ginyu, just to snatch something. And only, only one Champa, but uh, um, I think, I think that's fine. So, and then he's also got some cheese in the baby subduel. Let me, let me show you what this card does real quick. Alright, so it's kind of like Ginyu, but uh, if your leader card is Machine Mutant, choose one of your opponent's battle cards with 15k or less power, switch to active mode, and gains f plus 5k power for duration of the turn, they gain, then gain control of it. Um, 
So it's, it's like Ginyu, except for you don't have to give them a body, you just literally take it. So uh, really interesting tech there, and I'd be interested to see if, if he actually cited it at all. So uh, Next up, we've got um, Robert Robert's uh, Vegeta baby. So uh, yeah, and this this is more what I'm expecting to see. Four of uh, the, the one drop. Uh, there's also, so, uh, and then usually the it, it differentiates from uh, how much digging deep. Um, usually people either go into the chain hard with four of these and like even the, the two drop uh, GT Vegeta, but um, you don't, it's not necessary for the chain, especially because you can just drop the four drop. And if you haven't awakened yet, drop the four drop, awaken, play the, play this for free, and then play this for one red energy. So you still have one red energy open. Um, and then also, uh, so th this looks like more of a slow control grind matchup for it, which is really cool. Um, is also ranked three burst attacks on Gohan. Uh, both of them, the last this list and the last one used a Zeno, but he's also using Fru Shroud and Mystery. Um, just a really powerful card, especially against the Mill matchup to just kind of end the game. Uh, Mill likes to use a lot of negates and a lot of like pseudo super combos, so not getting any of the benefits for that is really good, especially because they can even activate Bean. So uh, just having a big 30k double attacker is is strong, and also they can't mill you more than two. For that turn, so that's that's really good. He's also like he really wanted to get Fu, uh, Fu out, so he side three more in the side, which is weird but really cool. Uh, and then also uh, like two Saiyan off uh, onslaught Kefla. So this this was a really uh, greedy build, cause, and he even freezes Army Reborn. So even playing the secret rare from this set, so uh, a really greedy deck, but it, it really paid off. And uh, just being able to take advantage from getting being able to survive to turn four, and then. Uh, being able to just drop some really big boys like Frieza's Army Born, uh, Grade 8 Baby, and even Fu. So, good job to him. Next up, we've got Dylan Ashcroft's uh, build of it. Uh, pretty pretty similar to the previous build. Um, the only big difference is he's running hit instead of uh, running instead of burst attack, so so that's uh, that's interesting there. Uh, he's also running so three of each of the combo pieces for the chain attack Zeno, which is which is weird. I've never seen pe someone use three chain attack trunks, but also three Zenos, so uh, that, that's really interesting. Um, but he's also running the Frieza's Army Reborn in the, in the main, and then also two Foos in the side, and also two Mirrors in the side. That's really interesting. I guess it's just to, to use with Champa to, to end the game faster. Uh, also, Two impeccable Super Saiyan Kaba is also. I think this card is really good. Uh, its, it's attack can't be negated, and it's just a you know, 15k beater. So you can chain attack him out, um, and then just kind of attack for game with him and Champa because they can't uh, they can't negate the attack. So uh, I think that's really good. Uh, I, I feel like this is like a moderately safer version of that the previous deck, but still really strong. And uh, I, I love foreseeing it, so I'm happy to see that deck uh, that that in this deck. So. Uh, next up, we've got James Grant's version of uh, Vegeta Baby. Uh, he's running. Um, he, I'd say this is more of a an early mid range version of the deck. So uh, he's running not only four intensifying power trunks, but also two Saiyan Kabas. So that's really aggressive. Uh, but he's also running uh, three Fearless Pan. So Pan has like du the duality of being both aggressive and defensive. You can either just plop it out for defense, but also giving everything you have double strike and plus five K is really powerful. Uh, and can really end the games, especially since you can get it off of chain attack trunk. So that's really good. Uh, only running two for seeing hits, which is I think fine because you're trying to you're kind of an earlier curve. And then uh, for the baby combo, uh, he's only doing three of the new promo and two of the great ape. So he's not invested as much as this. This is just kind of um, if you can get it out kind of thing. So and also uh, two uh, a scientist foo and a time patrol trunks kind of shows that yeah they're really uh, digging deep for. Um, for those uh, that that earlier win, so there's that, uh, and it's interesting. Time Patrol Trunks. Um, usually, when I see it in this deck, they're using uh, the the Kai to find um, because the the Kai one of these, which looks at the top three, but you can only sort of get battle cards uh, compared to Time Patrol Trunks, where you can look at two, and then you can uh, it, you can put one on top of the deck or the bottom. But uh, especially, it, most people who do it use it to look for Zeno, so. Uh, but he might be looking for either minus Killy Zone or Revenge Death Ball, so there's that. Um, and uh, yeah, in, in the side we're seeing more of these Trunks Power over Seeing Time, another Scientist Fu, and also two Deadly Defenders. So that's that's really interesting to me uh, for something that looks like it's more of a, a an early mid range aggression. It's it's really interesting to see the Deadly Defender in there. But uh, it looks like it did well for him. And next up we've got uh, Andrew's uh, Vegeta Baby. 
uh, he had the, the interesting choice of two uh, Sandar Bola. So Bola is able to find uh, the intensifying power of Trunks, but also daily training of Vegeta uh, and even digging deep. And I think you can even find any of the, the baby versions too, because they're all uh, Vegeta GT. So uh, a really interesting check choice there. I think it's really good. I think I think when I did the math, oh, and you can get Chan tracks. You can get about half half the cards uh, in this deck could be found with the Sandar Bola, so really good choice there. Uh, he's running uh, three of the Times Choice Supreme Kai, so just the, the card I was mentioning last time, so it's really good for making sure you find your combo pieces. Um, they're not running Zeno in the main, which I think is good because you're trying to just plop out the big great ape so as soon as possible. Uh, so that's happening. I mean, that's why you're running daily training Vegeta. You don't want to run this card unless you really want to be able to get turn one this, turn two that. So. Uh, and then lastly, we've got, uh, he has one dimensional banisher Fu, and in the side he's got Fu Shrouded in Mystery and also the Zenos, but he's also got the Terra Assault Frost and also the, the Strategies of Universe 7, which is a card that I've been seeing pop up uh, periodically now. Um, what it does, it just gives all your red Saiyan cards a uh, barrier, and all your baby stuff is a red Saiyan technically, so they all get barrier, which can be uh, really you know surprising or unintended if, if people aren't seeing it comes uh, coming. So. Uh, yeah, we've got that. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Namvo's Vegeta Baby. Oh, they're so... They're, okay, okay, we're done. This last Vegeta Baby. Um, it looks like... So this is pretty much the same as the, the previous version. Um, kind of just going deep for the uh, the chain, the, uh, into the baby chain. Once again, running one, uh, four of the one drops and also the daily training Vegeta. Uh, and also running two of the uh, Saiyan daughter uh, Bola, because once again you can find about half your deck with this. Uh, for their Overwhelm, they, instead of going for uh, the top three search, they're just going for the draw one and gain plus 5k uh, Supreme Kai time, which is I think is an interesting choice. I'd I'd probably still use the other Overwhelm. I think you can go, being able to find what you need I think is a little bit more important than just an extra 5k combo power. But uh, I, I definitely think this is a good choice for the deck. Uh, he's running two of the Fu Shroud and Mystery, and then uh, pretty much this looks like a pretty uh, pretty much the same size. So I'm guessing they had a um, uh, a similar. They both ran the same deck with just minor tweaks. Because I don't think the uh, I don't think the previous one ran Fearless Pan. But uh, yeah, very very cool there. And let's go to the Hurudagarn deck. Uh, so a lot of people. Oh, oh yeah, okay. This one I really like. This is a really interesting one. So. Uh, they are using the new Encroaching Darkness Demigra for, um, uh, what this guy does is you can overwhelm it for, I think, like, two or three, and then it gets, um, uh, all your seven drop Demigras get, um, Xeno Evolve for three, and so you can get this guy out for, for th a turn earlier, but also this says that, uh, when you play this card, your opponent can't, um, play anything with, uh, you can't attack with anything with an original battle, or energy of 10k or less, uh, battle cards you can still attack with leaders, but so you do that so you play this so you get some defense You you play this guy and then this guy warps something in your opponent's field and lets you play a uh, four drop or less so uh, Worst case you just get another one of these encroaching darkness because Xeno evolve sends it to the warp uh, And then best case you get dark control uh, Demon God Demigra or even you can get Cronoa if you really need it if you got like milled or something, but uh, and this guy's really good because whenever he attacks, um, he mills one out of their hand. Um, you, they have to discard one, and if it's a combo card, uh, uh, you combo with it. So, uh, really good there. And even like against, so against like Miljanimba, Miljanimba is probably this deck's best matchup because it fills up your warp, but or your drop barrier for your warping. But uh, whenever you attack with this guy, they most of their combos are like the like the cells and stuff. So you you get like a 30k boost and stuff. So. Uh, and it still drops from their hand even if this attack is negated or not. So uh, really cool there. And then also paired with like Phantom, Fla uh, Phantom Flame Cannon uh, and stuff like that. And just Hurtigarn's, uh when he's at four energy or more, uh, you get to drop one card from their hand a turn. So really, really cool deck. Just being able to uh, kind of mill them, but um, just have a, like a lot of hand control, which is really great. Uh, and then uh, four at all costs Vegeta just to kind of end the game and uh, just stuff like that. So really, really cool build. I really like this. Uh, hopefully this promo price doesn't go up because I really wanted to play him, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, in the side, there's also um, two Black Mass Saiyan Splintering Mind. I think, was there, what? 
yeah, okay, this looks the same. Yeah, Andrew Dovale also played mostly the same deck with minor tweaks here and there. But, uh, yeah, because he didn't run the, the five drop in the main, but uh, uh, he only ran one, but he put two in his side. But uh, really, really cool. Um, but, yeah, the Splintering Mind, um, all it does, uh, since our leader is not, uh, I, think it's, I think it's looking for just a black leader. Since our leader isn't black, it just, whenever you play it, you warp something, so... Uh, if you do this, then in, with the Temporal Darkness Demigra, you just get to warp two things for three energy, which can be really powerful depending on the matchup, so that's really cool. And I think I think it, that's it for these two decks, nothing too different. Just just being able to play really defensive with Hurigarn, also having like Dimension Magic and, and stuff like that, just it's it's really powerful. And then you just get like a big like 30k body for, for pretty much free, and then also this 20k body where you want to prioritize because it's it's dropping a card from your hand every time it attacks. So really, really powerful. And then the last top 16 deck from this event uh, is uh, this Frieza Swap Engine. Um, the guy, let me, sorry, his name is Mark Passia. I believe he's been just rocking this for like months. And so he just keep he just keeps performing with it, with, with it which is really cool. Um, so Frieza's uh, the Galactic Emperor. At the end of your turn, you just gotta untap something. Uh, one of your one of your battle cards, not energy. So, but that, that's really powerful, especially with um, a lot of these these swap engines. Um, but just because you can attack with something, but it still restands, so then they still have to like invest something to get rid of it. And uh, he also he, he ran two Shugesh and then uh, two of Jocko's, so he has a little bit of the, the Shugesh cheese. He's not, he actually can't get too much out of it. He can get the Power Charge Bardock and then also uh, Ultimate Potential Super Saiyan 2 Son Gohan and also uh, Vegeta striving to be the best. Vegeta striving to the best off Shugesh is just really dirty because they um, usually people either play Kronoa or they decide, oh, I have barriers, so I won't be you know Shugesh, but. This this gets directly out of like if they swing at something with barrier, then you just play Vegeta, they die. You get to draw a card and untap an energy, so really powerful. Uh, it's cool to see that. And then uh, he's also running some overrun cards. He's running three Bardock, which is cool. Uh, three Gina here to support. So this is the one uh, that um, uh, I think Marcel Russell was also running this card. But um, whenever you attack or whenever you combo with this card, you can build up to the top three. So really good for filling up your drop area for your sparking stuff, but also like any of your, your overwhelm, which is nice. Um, so pretty much good against any non-mill uh, deck. But also this is this is a Goku's lineage, so you can go Bardock into Gene, so that's really cool. Um, and I think I think that's about it for, for this deck. Uh, running three freezes, biting his time in the side, I think is really good because uh, this deck would be super susceptible to um, the stri Goku striving to be the best, but no one in the top 16 was running it, so I guess it wasn't a, a really big issue. Which I was really surprised with that no one no one was running that card. But uh, yeah, that's that's it for for this event. And let's go let's go over to ARG Las Vegas. Uh, and also, hello for if you just decided that you didn't want to learn about PPG Atlanta. So uh, let's let's go over to uh, to this one. Okay, so uh, the the finals were Hurugar Mir, uh, and it was taken by David uh, with and this this red blue build. So this is just um, just to be honest, like red blue is just really powerful. Like uh, just it has like a lot of pressure with like intensifying power trunks and Saiyan Kaba. Um, and being able to do chain attack if you go into, but this wasn't even running chain attack. Uh, it was just getting like a lot of advantage from Darkness Minosha and Hurigan the Wanderer. Now that cells out of the like cells essentially out of the meta game, people aren't afraid of going really greedy with just getting as much hand advantage as possible. So uh, a lot of decks are kind of taking advantage of that. Uh, with Hurigan probably being one of the best leaders for that. Um, also, just just being able to like. Phantom Flame Cannon is super, uh, so powerful, um, even like on defense or offense, like you can just, just being able to defend with it and then also uh, negging a card from your opponent's hand. Uh, right now with, with Mill in the meta, it's usually better to um, get advantage by making your opponent uh, go negative than you go positive, just so you're, you know, you're not affecting your deck size that much, but uh, a really cool just like mid-range deck, um, uh, just being able to drop some early pressure, have some... Uh, mid-range bad boys and like being able to drop a foreseeing hit or scientist foo or even mass saying the mysterious warriors so 
Uh, really cool deck there. He's, uh, in the side, they've got uh, three Sneak Attack Vegeta. Sneak Attack Vegeta is super powerful. Um, just being able to have your you know your opponent get rid of a card whenever it attacks once per turn, which is nice. Um, and uh, also like two Mafubas in the side as well for if you want to kind of transition to more of a control deck. So. Uh, congratulations to him. And then we've got Timothy Lee with his second place uh, version of the deck. So this this is more of a, uh, a Dimension Supports Trunks list. Like I said earlier, there are a lot of people who ran Dimension support Trunks, and by a lot I mean at least two. But uh, yeah, so the idea was just to put a lot of pressure and do a lot of, uh, once again, hand advantage and critical stuff. So Dimension Support Trunks, um, you're just able to uh, use him to get out these uh, pretty much like big body uh, Goku and Vegeta, and then they have crit, so they have to deal with that, and then they don't go away at the end of the turn, which just really uh, benefits for what the main weakness of Overrealm is, uh, just, you know, the, the cards don't stay, but that's really cool. And then also has like uh, some at all cost Vegeta, and also just one ultimate fusion Gogeta in your hand, just in case you did want to Union Fusion. Uh, and then... Uh, kind of being able, so you, this deck really just puts a lot of early pressure, and then you kind of can bulk up in the mid game and just take advantage of being able to drop like one, two, even like three cards from their hand on the daily. So, um, or just on the you know each turn. So really good there. Um, in the side, they they put some red, which is really interesting um, because they have a little bit of red here, uh, and also some group leader Pilaf. And Mufubas, no Raging Spirit Sengohan in the main, which is a little interesting, but I, I can understand it. Um, and uh, yeah, really solid deck, and congratulations on getting second. And then we've got third place. Wait, wait, who's third? All right, Tim got third, but I'm actually I'm going to go back to him when I'm just going to go through the leaders real quick. So we've got Jake Moyes, uh, Hurigarn. So uh, he's got kind of this the just a more traditional red blue, uh, but he's he's got instead of like hand control, it's just kind of uh, chipping away. I, I'd say like this is mid-range just because he's also got like two Food Shroud and Mystery and so uh, especially because he also has Chain Attack Zeno so I think the idea is just to survive with this deck, be able to get the Chain Attack Zeno out just to make sure that they don't uh, they don't pretty much you know one hit KO you with any of the Broly stuff and then from there um, just uh, just chip away with Intensifying Power Trunks like Digging Deep Cheat is good, Forcing Hit is great and once again Probably, if you whoever drops Fu Shroud of Mystery usually wins the game, so a uh, really powerful card in there. Um, in the side, he's got his Phantom Flame Cannons. Um, I'm guessing this is for more of a, a mill archetype. Um, just being able to get rid of cards in their hand is really strong in the mill matchup, so uh, there is that. And um, I think I think that's all I want to say about this one. So, uh, next up, our last regard is Marcus Catani, uh, or K not Catani, <laughs> Marcus Cantarsi. Sorry. Um, there, uh, he's running also a the blue red. Or no, he's actually just running um, uh, the red version. But you're, he's got enough of the blue archetype cards that they, he can run uh, like Bean. And since Dimension Magic's a thing, there's stuff like that too. So kind of the same deck, um, but more focusing on the red. Um, he's running uh, one Fu Shroud and Mystery, but one in the side. Also got Mirror and Dimensional Banisher Fu. Mirror is really good for just once again edging out the game and also having two Bodyguard Electric. That's a really interesting choice as well. You don't see that card as much right now, but it's really cool. Sneaking out right here, he's got uh, Frieza's Armor Reborn, so if he's... Uh, I think I think that's a really weird choice. I don't think you'd ever want to charge... I mean, unless you really don't want blue, right? You can just really, really go charge red every turn, but uh, interesting choice there. You've also got one at all cost Vegeta as well, so I think you're running enough blue that having two on turn four isn't crazy, or I guess turn five is really when you want to drop this card. And a couple, a little bit more blue in the side as well, but uh, really cool there. Uh, he's also got two minus Killy Zone in the side. I think it could deserve a main deck spot if you're trying to go chain attack Zeno. But uh, regardless, uh, really, really good deck. Uh, Red Blue's really coming back from, like, what? It, it was really popular back in, like, September, so uh, interesting to see it come back in, in this capacity. Uh, next up, we've got uh, our Brawlies for this event. So this is Steve Aragon's uh, Universe 7 Brawly. So uh, really interesting here. Um, so Sengoku Path to Greatness is just honestly here. You can't... Uh, a lot of people were confused with this because you can't go into uh, Sengoku Hope of Universe 7. Um, and at least, I hope he knows. Because <laughs> this isn't Goku's lineage, so you can't just swap into there. But 
Um, the, I think the main idea for this card is just to be... Um, he's, he's a universe 7, he gains a lot of advantage, um, because when you play him, you put something to rest, and you draw a card, and he's 19k, so, like, this card's just over-tuned in a lot of ways, but, so, uh, that's really good, um, and then he's running, like, ready to fight Sengoku, so you're able to find pretty much most cards in your deck, um, the only cards, like, over half your deck is, can be hit with this, so I think this is a really good turn 1 play. Uh, and it gives you an excuse to run some blue as well, so he's running 4 objection, 4 bean, um, and, and four of these, so 12 blue I think is a really good number, um, and then uh, after that we've got uh, just some like Master Roshis, he's running one Shugesh, which is cool, and into one Vegeta Strive, which would be the best. Uh, no Plant Vegeta, which is interesting, just because um, I, I would think he would need it, but oh, also he's got four at all cost Vegeta for blue, I don't, or three, I, didn't, I don't know if I said that. Um, but other than that, uh, a little bit weird on the races. He's also running uh, five ultimate forms on Goku. So this card's really good. Um, to this, this is pretty much how you you get to uh, Hope of Universe Seven. The idea is you just drop this on turn uh, four, uh, which you can. Do. You have to be at three or less life, which is really easy for Broly because he really likes to tap. And then uh, you get to blow up something, and if it's in rest mode, you get to draw a card, which you can make sure it's in rest mode with Broly's effect, so you can draw one card if you really need it. And then you get to go into Hope of Universe Seven. Hope of Universe 7 has, is just a triple strike, uh, or triple attack uh, critical, so just being able to chip three life away from your opponent is really powerful, and then you can um, either go into him again with uh, by untapping an energy and having the cards for it, or go into victory strike, or just have him, worst case, attack a fourth time, so really, really powerful. I think this this is a really good win condition. If, if Broly was green, this would be crazy, because you'd also be negging a card from their hand, but... He just he's just a big body that that swings in so a uh, really cool uh, deck profile and uh, idea so I'm happy it worked out for him. Is there anything anything interesting in this? Oh, he's got uh, some freezes Emperor, Emperors of Universe Seven on the side. So if you want to go the more controlling matchup uh, for whatever reason, you can take out um, the other cards, go into the Cold Hearted Strike Frieza, and and then go into Universe Seven because we are a Yellow Leader, so he does get his uh, that ability from it. So. All right, next up we've got our last Broly deck. Uh, we've got uh, Andres Rizzo's uh, Frieza Broly. So this is also just like a really unique Broly build again. Uh, between both events, there, there are like three or four archetypes, and there are even more archetypes that, uh, like there was a Veggie Broly at EU that showed up, so this tech, this leader is obviously really good, so just being able to support so many archetypes and stuff, uh, it, it's it's really great. Uh, and so this is Frieza Swap, so it's just being able to get out the the five drop. Um, before you ask, no, you don't get uh, you don't get the Cold Bloodless with uh, Frieza Showdown or Final Showdown Frieza, but it doesn't matter too much, as it's a big 25k double strike crit body that you can get out, or you can cheat out with the chain, and then you can untap it and attack again if you need to. So that's really powerful. Um, also, Frieza Storm of Blows is a great card just because it blows up something when it comes out, and you can get them out for. Oh, what, one, two energy, so that's that's really great. Um, other than that, he just has uh, some uh, red cards to help support, for three body change Ginyu, and then the super combos, as well as three super combo of the Infernal Villainy Cell. Uh, and uh, so you just pretty much grind and have a lot of super combos and, and live through that way, and then just drop the win condition, which can also be Freeze's Arm Reborn, he's got one of those in here. And other than that, pretty self-explanatory. Having Time Patrol Trunks is really great. I, I once again would rather do uh, see the the what the the what Kai time Kai of uh, Kai of time uh, that does the top three for battle cards. Just because you really want to make sure you get your Frieza pieces because there's not like Successor of Hope for for the archetypes. So uh, that's that's a change I would make for that. We also got some Son Goku striving to be the best. Finally, like <laughs> twenty plus decks deep. So. Uh, there's that, um, but we've also, uh, he's got some just blue control stuff if he needs to, and also three Saiyan Cobbles, which is really great, uh, and some Dimensional Banisher food to get around cards that can be trouble. I'd, I'd be interested to see where he side it's because Frieza Storm of Blows is really good for uh, KOing stuff, but uh, this this might just be for getting rid of stuff you couldn't get rid of otherwise, so a uh, really cool deck, uh, and, and happy it, it worked out for him. Oh, I'm lying. We had one more, probably. Uh, this is... <laughs> Jory, no, this is Joey Palladino's uh, lineage aggro version. Um, we we saw a build like this, but um, yeah, he's he's running more. He uh, he's running a deck 
version that was a little bit more afraid of uh, striving to be the best just because I'm seeing two freezes buying his time in the main, but uh, really powerful. He's he's running one Shigesh just to try to sneak him out, which is cool. Um, especially when, when you're running Power Charge Bardock, I think that's a good choice. Um, if you're not running him, I, I don't see Shigesh being as necessary for this, for this, but he's only also running one, so that's good. Um, but yeah, just just the aggressive uh, Broly. He's only running three mirror instead of the four that is, you know I've seen you know people greedily do. But I think that's okay. And also three Dark Temptation Toa, which can be really good for giving your leader a plus five k boost. Um, you can attack with your leader twice. You can untap your leader when you use his ability. So this if if that ends up with happening, you get plus two cards because you get draw each time you attack. But also uh, you get a free five k uh, for both attacks. So that's really powerful. And can can help end the game. Uh, two gold blo uh, cold bloodlust in main and two bad ring. Um, also, uh, two discovered dynasties and Gohan in the side. I think is really interesting. Uh, you can't really. The only way you can go into it is with uh, ultimate potential Super Saiyan two and Gohan, which you can also do in the, the side here. But just gets a bunch of card drawn, a bunch of pressure, which I think is great. Uh, not good against the mill matchup in my opinion. Uh, probably not because you can get milled out. So uh, that's probably why it's in the side. And it might be a little bit slow, but it can be. You can get a lot of advantage if uh, you don't need to kill them. If you, if it's not a race of killing them first as much, um, uh, I think that's that's really good. So uh, and then also just Kronos in the side and, and Dimensional Banisher Fu. So uh, good deck there. Next up, we've got we've got another Broly. I swear. Okay, I I am just. I just lost my mind. Okay, we've got another, we've got another version of the the Frieza swap, uh, pretty similar, um, just with some minor um, tech choices. So he's running one intensifying power trunk just because it makes all the difference. But uh, he's also running um, four of the cell instead of I think it was four and three. The same general idea, just being able to get your your thing out. I I once again really surprised about uh, type control trunks instead of uh, the Kronoa or like. Supreme Kai of Time. I, I think that deck, that card be going one deeper is way more important than being able to get Bean or Weiss's Coercion. But uh, definitely still worked out for them. Um, and it, maybe I could hear there if if they're thinking of getting like Mafubas or Time Magic from the side or something like that. That might make more sense. Um, and uh, they they'd probably know a lot more about why they decided to choose that over it. But uh, really cool there. He's also maining uh, a Burst Energy Super Saiyan Bardock. Um, so I, if he's afraid of. I, I don't know what else is to really be afraid of. I guess it's just like the three drop uh, Goku from the, the Broly lineage, but um, yeah, just really strong, powerful deck. Um, once again, a 25k double strike crit that you can attack with twice is, is really powerful, uh, and I can see it sneaking in a lot of games just because crit's always very powerful, so uh, congrats to you. Okay, this is not a Broly, right? Was that the last one? Okay, okay, whew, okay. So we've got, this is the third place deck. This is Tim's uh, Zeno Pan. Uh, pretty pretty self-explanatory. Um, just some uh, cool stuff. We've got uh, four Zarbons. Uh, so when this card dies, um, you get to uh, draw a card and give something minus 15k. So pretty much blow up something if you want, which is really cool. Um, he's also running uh, some Quick Rush Trunks just to make sure you can go into the Zeno, lane, uh, the Zeno chain. So uh, since he's running two of these, uh, three... Ah, sorry. So he's running six, uh, six of the earlier chain attack, uh, six of the earlier GT trunks, four chain attacks, and then uh, three Zenos too. So going a little bit greedy there. Uh, really wanting to make sure you get you, he gets that off, uh, and then also two time patrol trunks. Uh, once again, Kai. Sh I, I think you should be using Kai just because you want to make sure to get Zeno. But I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, and then also uh, in the side we've and also four for seeing hit, which is great. Uh, in the in the side he's running some body change Ginyu, which is cool. Some unwake unending awakening, uh, and then also uh, the minus kill zone. I'd almost put these in the main if you could, just because it's really important to uh, make sure your your Zeno chain goes off. Um, but then also some foos, and especially the ten drop, which is really powerful, and the eight drop Frieza too. So uh, really cool deck, and uh, congrats. Uh, to getting third with this one. Uh, next up, oh, I missed the name. Uh, next up is Christopher's uh, Zeno Pan. Pretty much the same idea. Uh, even he's even running two Quick Crush, uh, which is really cool. Also, everybody's Pal uh, I didn't mention this is really good in this deck because you drop it. It's a twenty k, um, and it's it's one of the rare. It's one of like the it's as a fifteen k two drop red card. It's like one of the best. So, uh, and also just having like. 
quick, draw, uh, quick, rush, uh, quick rush trunks with uh, Pan. And 20k crit that you can just attack with on turn 2 is really powerful too, so uh, they're, they're pretty much just taking that, that hit with it, so um, really good there. Uh, I didn't see any, I don't think there are Topos in the previous uh, deck, but this card's really good. Um, just because it's a gate, but also you get a draw card and stuff like that, so that's good in the deck. Um, and then uh, he's also running some Glory Obsessed um, Prince of Destruction Vegeta, which I think is a really good card for getting rid of uh, these barrier cards. Um, this card can attack things in active mode, and then when it does, it gains plus 10k, so you play this card with, and if it's the first thing you play, it's a 30k that it can attack into your opponent's, like, uh, Goku, like, uh, what, Height of Mastery, not Height of Mastery, but Path to Greatness, that's the one, so, uh, really cool there, and only running four after, uh, four extra cards in after image technique, which is why you should run Kai, but what do I know? Um, and then there's also uh, two power, Trunks Power Overseeing Time, which I think is really good for the, the once again, the mill matchup. You want to make sure that um, you've got, uh, if, if you really need a combo piece, halfway through the game you can get this uh, in there, especially since uh, if you, you for the mill matchup you really want Fu Shot and Mystery, and so if they mill it, you've got two other chances to get it, and even it's even sometimes better they mill it just because you want to get Trunks Power Overseeing Time. Um, no main board minus Killy Zone, and he's already running one on the side. I'd probably would buff that up to one or two more, but uh, really, really good uh, deck list. And um, yeah, I think it's Pan's. Pan's still really good. Pan's always good. So there's that. Next, we've got Josh Wyman's. Pretty much the same deck because he's also running Time Patrol Trunks. Oh, I know why. Okay, okay, I'm dumb. All right, Time Patrol Trunks is better because you can get it off everybody's Palyamsha. All right, that's why. Okay, sorry, I, I was probably acting like I was probably being stupid, but that's that's why everyone's running Time Patrol Trunks. And it's only one card more deep, so it's not a big deal. And that's and that's why I was jokingly saying it was like not a big deal. But yeah, that's why because Yamcha can get it. So. Uh, but yeah, pretty much the same builds we've been seeing. Nothing too fancy pantsy from that. Um, running Army Reborn in the main, which is cool, but also uh, two sh Foos in the side. He's not running uh, Trunks Overseeing Time, which I think is okay. I, I think Trunks Overseeing Time is really good in this meta, so um, I, I hope to see more of him. But uh, really, really solid deck. And uh, let's go next to uh, our finally some Dragon Ball Shenron decks. We, we've been waiting for like 28 deck profiles but we got two of them in at ARG Las Vegas uh we, this first one's by Kevin is uh just the the more I'm not, I don't want to say generic but it's it's just Gogeta um uh re really cool just really control uh, centric um he's running blue yellow which I think is really the way to go um just being able to use personal ambition and also bad ring laser which is great uh but still being able to run blue and ramp into the cards you need um, so then he's running uh, three Gogeta Hero Revived. Uh, the new Paranga card is really great, as, as long uh, as well as the Shenron figure of Majesty. Uh, additionally, being he's running one uh, Fletching Talent Pan, which is great. Uh, I, I believe this also this deck also got first after Switch Wis is really cool. But the main reason this deck is really cool is that he's running the Let's Kill Krillin package in the side. Oh my goodness, who saw this coming? So uh, you, you don't actually have any green. So you, the way you get this out is you. Uh, you just use what world piece? Yeah, you use world piece to get out persistent assault Krillin, and then you can get it, uh, the Goku. So, uh, really, really cool to see that happening. Uh, and then also on the side, he's running like uh, some just yellow support, like flying Nimbus. I can see is really good for against really aggressive matchups. Um, and I think that's better. Also, just the Migra for an alternate win condition and stuff like that. But and also Wish to Paranga is really good. Uh, the only thing about Wish to Paranga is that you need to be able to. Uh, have a, a card with the same energy cost out as your opponent, so I could see that being kind of hard to do, especially since um, he's, I mean, he's got a 1 drop, 2 drop, and 3 drop, but uh, he doesn't have a lot of battle cards that he's playing, so I could see that being uh, a bit tricky to, to pull off, but uh, really, really shouts to him for, for showing that the Let's Go Krillin package can be not the worst. Uh, next we've got Amir's um, oh, this deck was really cool. Both Shenron decks I, were like really cool for me. So we've got Gogeta, and now we've got Vegito. So um, let me let me pull up uh, repeated Force Vegito real quick. All right, so it's a Union Patara for five, but uh, you can get him. You can cheat him out with other ways. But Triple Strike, and then this card gain. This card attacks. This gains plus five K power for the for each Sun Goku and Vegeta in your drop area for duration of the turn. So uh, you've got like just a bunch of Gokus <laughs> and a bunch of Vegetas, and so let's say you only have like five, 
you get a 50k triple attacker and then also uh, give it triple strike or sorry triple striker and then if you give it triple attack it's a 60k triple strike triple attacker which is just crazy like you you can't do anything against that I feel like it's just really powerful um, and just can get it done and then also uh, the way you can do this is with uh, lightning speed Vegito and so uh, what happens is you get him out for free by uh, you get him out for three uh, by having a, uh, a Goku and a Vegeta out, and so you just Union Patara them, so you just play on top of this. And then this guy, um, so when he attacks, uh, you you can attack anything in active mode as well, but you, you swing with him, and then you mill the top 10 cards from your deck after the battle, and then if there are any Vegitos in there, you can immediately ev uh, what, uh, what is it? evolve them. Yeah, so you, you put it on top of this Vegito uh, for free, and so you just get this guy out for free by playing this three draw, or playing this for three. And then you've got just this big body. And then you can also, um, just because, like, preface of recovery and sneak attack Vegeta, so you can play, like, sneak attack Vegeta, swing, and then you can child wish for free, get out preface of recovery Son Goku, swing with him, play Sensu Bean, have three energy, and then now you have three energy open, you play lightning speed Vegito, attack with him, and then after that you go into repeat force Vegito, and then you, you can swing with a big old, like, 50, 60k triple strike. So... Uh, really cool idea there. Uh, really like this and well executed, I feel, as well. So congratulations to him. He's also running some yellows, so you can do some bad ring and some flying Nimbus as well, uh, which I think is really powerful. Uh, and since both these Gokus and Vegetas have uh, barrier, I think that's really powerful as well. Uh, and just with energy manipulation here, that's that's awesome. So, uh, And then just an aside, nothing too crazy. He's got Black Mass Day and the Devastator, uh, which I think is a really cool choice. Um, when you, I think when both drop areas have 15 or more Saiyans, um, if this card attacks, um, it, it pretty much just crits, hits a life no matter what, unless they, they have blocker. So, uh, really cool there. Uh, I wonder why he didn't run 4 preface of recovery Son Goku. Um, I, I, I would think he'd be good at, at 4 of in the deck, but uh, it, I'd be interested to see what he is. He also has objection, so you can kind of go into it. Because, worst case, you can still just do the 5 energy of this. If, you, if you're at 5 energy and... Uh, you have like sneak attack Vegeta out. You can play Child's Wish for two. Preface of recovery comes out, untaps your energy, and then you just go into the. F uh, you pay five energy for this. So, uh, really cool deck profile, and happy it went well with him. Next up, we've got the single Mojanimba. Uh, I'm not going to say uh, it is piloted by uh, Russell. Uh, I'm not going to say too much about this deck. Um, you know how Mill works. Uh, he's running, striving to be the best in the main cool um and then also um that's that's pretty much it he's he's running one double striker um but i, I think i think this deck really speaks for itself so uh next up we've got uh oh uh jesus's uh explosive power vegeta favorite favorite leader for a really long time he had a really cool engine with it because he you're able to run blue and red um and also if you have a universe so his thing is that if you have a universe to in or not a universe too. If you have a universe seven in your energy area, when this card attacks, you gain plus five k, and you draw a card on your awakened side. Uh, and then the uh, explosive power of Vegeta, pretty much what it lets you do is it lets you exchange your energy. And so what's really cool with this is like you can put like a Zeno in your energy, uh, and then uh, so it's not dead, and then you can take it out of your energy when you attack with, and then go into chain attack trunks with it. So just being able to do that, but also being able to just kind of hide cards in your energy, and then do chain attack trunks, and then get them back for when you need them after chain attack trunks, I think is a really cool play. So, uh, really cool there. It's it's mostly red, but he can sneak in some blue. Um, especially uh, since this is a blue leader, so you can blend Dimension Magic, Sensu Bean, Mafubas, and which also means that if you have a Zeno dead in hand, you can just run one of those. He also has one in Yuling Trunks, so that's cool. And then mostly red from there. So, And also, uh, since this is a the Scale Strike Vegeta, even though... Um, just because he is a uh, universe seven and he's got warrior of universe seven, he comes out for no specific energy. Same with his burst tax on Gohan, and uh, so you don't have to be worried about them having two specific red if you want to go into like uh, two blue turn two so, or turn three. So really cool there. Uh, he's running some hits which are great, um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. So a lot of a lot of reds in these two two days of, of tournaments. So and lastly, our, our last red deck also uh, is Yamcha. Uh, I think this was a really good meta call in the sense like Yamcha at 100% is really good against uh, what Goku path to greatness. Uh, just really good at making sure that you can get rid of it in turn three, and so they can't do anything about it. Um, 
and just being able to just drop some big red cards and be aggressive with it. Uh, four of these fortune teller babas are great. Being able to run uh, a really miraculous comeback Ultimate Gohan is one of my favorite cards too. So being able to run that and everybody's pal Yamcha, of course. So uh, just just feeling really just aggressive and having a lot of mid range with red uh, is is really good. So uh, I'm does he run? He's running. Yeah, he's running chain attack. I'm. I'm Okay, he, he does have Zeno on the side. Okay, I didn't see that first. So I think that's a good call too. Um, but also just Chain Attack into Fearless Pan is just always a really good combo. I feel like it gets a lot done. So that's good. And some Burst Attacks on Gohans and just all that. So lastly, sneaking in the Frieza's Army Reborn if you get to five. So a uh, really cool deck profile and uh, happy to do it well. So, But that's that's going to be it. I've probably rambled for way too long about uh, about these events, but uh, you can go to DBS decks. I'll, I'll have links below about uh, both these events, and if any of the deck lists that you're really interested in, in diving into deeper, there's that. Uh, and that's it for me. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.